Is this normal during sex? Today I'm covering the top five questions that you have about whether or not something you've experienced in the bedroom is normal or not so much. So let's get started. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, author, social media educator. And on this channel, I'm the health class you wish you had in high school. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and turn on the bell so you never miss an upload. Today, I'm talking about five things that you constantly ask me about whether or not it's normal. And before I even start any of that, I do want to say that if something is bothering you or concerns you and you're just not sure, even after watching this, go ahead and talk to your healthcare provider who knows you best because you know your body better than anybody. Okay, let's just jump right into the first thing. Number one, is bleeding with sex or after sex normal? And the answer here is, it depends, which I know is kind of annoying, but it's the truth. So it can be perfectly normal to have a little bit of pink on the toilet paper when you wipe after sex or you know a drop or two of blood. And I'm talking specifically here to women and people with a vagina. And the reason is, is that sex is about friction. And sometimes you get little tears in the vagina and they can you know have a little drop of blood or something like that. And nine times out of 10 or almost 10 times out of 10, it's not a problem at all. The vagina heals itself and it's totally okay. But if there's more bleeding, it doesn't stop, or you've got a lot of pain associated with it, please get checked out because that could be a sign of something more serious, like a bigger injury in the vagina. You can sometimes see this bleeding when the first time you've had sex, if the hymen tears a little bit, but I do want you to remember that not everybody bleeds the first time they have sex, and that is not a good indicator of someone's virginity status. And if you want to know what I think about virginity and the whole definition, go ahead and watch this video up here. So there are some other reasons that bleeding could happen and should be a reason that we should check you out. So infections is a big one. So things like gonorrhea, chlamydia, trichomoniasis, those are sexually transmitted infections, and sometimes the only symptom is bleeding after sex, what we call postcoital bleeding. So the only way to get that diagnosed, come in, we'll do an exam, we'll get a diagnosis, and we'll get you some treatment, and it's not a reason to be ashamed or embarrassed. Another reason for bleeding after sex, and this is a rare reason, so I don't want you to freak out, is cervical cancer. And usually this is in somebody who's had a lot of bleeding or has had it for a very long time and has not ever had a pap smear or had one recently and most certainly has not had their HPV vaccination. And they come in and, and that's what we see. So I don't want you to think that's a common reason for bleeding after sex, but it is something we do sometimes see. Long story short, if it's just a little bit and it goes away and it never happens again, probably nothing. But if it's more than that, we should check it out. Number two, is pain with sex normal? I have got an entire video about how this is not normal and what could cause it, what we can do about it, how we can get you feeling better right up here. So go ahead and check that out. And I just wanna say that if anybody has ever told you that sometimes sex just hurts or you just need to relax, drink a glass of wine, and just loosen up a little bit, that is the stupidest answer ever. No, sex should not hurt. There's lots of different things that can cause it, ranging from things like endometriosis to decreased lubrication to pelvic floor dysfunction and we can help you out with all of these. So no, sex should not hurt. Okay, number three, is queefing normal? And I'm one of those people, I have like a few words that I just don't like. I don't like the word moist. I don't like the word queefing and I don't like the word panties. And you're probably thinking that's not really great for a gynecologist, but it's not because I don't like what the words stand for. They just sound weird in my mind. But anyway, queefing is normal. And what it is, is it's air that was trapped in the vagina and it comes out. It's like a vagina fart, but it doesn't smell because it's not coming from your rectum where poop is and bacteria. It's just air that got trapped in the vagina. And so this can happen after sex, you know, with penis and vagina sex, a little bit of air can get stuck in there. Then you move a certain way and the air comes out. It is not a sign that your body is broken and it really shouldn't be something you're ashamed of. I mean, it's something that if it happens, you know, you can laugh and, and just continue on with your day. Now, if you are really worried this is happening an extraordinary amount or you notice it with other symptoms like having issues, not being able to empty your bladder or your bowels or a feeling of prolapse or a sensation that something else isn't right down there, come on in and let's get checked out because sometimes we do see changes in queefing with people who have pelvic organ prolapse. None of these are life-threatening conditions. Usually that's not the case. So it's just one of those things. And again, laugh about it. If your partner shames you for it, please have them watch this video or just show them the door, whatever. Okay, the fourth thing, is squirting normal? And again, I'm talking about women and vagina owners. So when we're talking about squirting, 
We're talking about what some people might call female ejaculation. And we're not talking about just like, you know, wetness, a little bit of wetness from your own lubrication on your underwear, but some people are able to squirt and it looks like a large amount. It can be up to a couple of ounces. It can look like they're peeing, but people who squirt often say, it's not pee, it's clear in color. It doesn't smell like my pee. It's something else entirely. And we have research that has looked into this. My references are in the show notes below that show exactly that, that probably this fluid does come from the bladder. It's probably a little bit of urine, but there's more to it than that. And people who squirt will, you know, again, will say it, it's not my urine. And it's likely related to fluids that's made from the periurethral glands and the other glands surrounding the urethra, which is where the pee comes out. And they drain into the tube that pee comes out of. And so during sex, sometimes all that gets mixed together and people can squirt that fluid out. Is it bad for you? No, it's totally fine. Some people actually find that it really enhances their sexual pleasure and partners get excited by it and it's totally okay. Here's when I'd want you to make sure you get checked out. If you do think it's pee, whether it smells like pee or when you're dehydrated, you notice that the fluid that comes out is darker in color, yeah, that's probably urine and that's called coital incontinence or leaking pee when you're having sex. Um, and that can be related to other issues with your bladder like leaking pee when you laugh or sneeze or leaking pee on the way to the bathroom. Those are quality of life issues that people tend not to enjoy and that we can fix with medicine or surgery or therapy, so let us know. But if you enjoy squirting, you're sure it's not your urine and it brings you sexual pleasure because you're able to incorporate that in part of your sex life, then that's awesome. And if your partner shames you for it again, watch the video, educate. If they don't understand, we say bye-bye. Okay, the last thing, number five. Is itching or burning or swelling in your vaginal area normal after sex? And I'm gonna tell you, no. What I'm focusing on here is something that's really rare, but I've gotten a lot of people asking me questions about it, so I wanted to talk about it. And really what people are asking about, they're saying, can I be allergic to my partner's semen or sperm? And the answer is, yes, you can. Thankfully, it's rare. And it's a hypersensitivity. It's like being allergic to pollen or nuts or something like that, but you're allergic to your partner's sperm and seminal fluid. What this typically looks like is after sex, maybe 15 minutes or a half hour later, you might notice burning, redness, irritation in the vaginal area. Anywhere that sperm is touched, you might see the same thing, like, you know, like poison ivy, like an allergic reaction. Some people have it so severe, they get anaphylaxis, like trouble breathing. The good news, this does not affect your fertility. So if it's a partner you're with for life and you want to have kids, it doesn't mean you can't have kids. The bad news is that it requires a little bit of a workup and treatment. So we can actually send you to an allergist and they can do allergy testing to confirm that's what's going on. And through treatments, sometimes they can desensitize you or sometimes you need to then use fertility treatments where they're able to take your partner's sperm, essentially wash it, get rid of some of that antigen that you're allergic to and then do intrauterine insemination or IVF in order to get you pregnant. Now, if you're thinking, oh my goodness, that sounds extreme. I don't think that's what's going on. But still, if you've got itching and burning, that could be, you know, other things like a yeast infection, bacterial vaginosis, other STIs. So if you've got that going on, come on in and, and we can do an exam and get things checked out. Okay, what other questions do you have about if something is normal during sex or not? Go ahead and drop your questions in the comments below. Check out my references and resources in my show notes. And as always, you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln for more. All right, this was a fun one. Stay tuned. We'll see what we come up with next week. Bye-bye.